Good morning, everybody. Morning. Welcome to Golden City Alliance Fellowship. Um, why don't we give a round of applause to God for our wonderful worship? Thank the Lord for the praise and worship team for leading us in a, a lyrically Christ centered and God centered worship. I hope you are blessed as I am truly blessed you know, by uh, the presence of the Lord in this place. And of course, I'm also very encouraged by the presence of everyone here and of course everybody who's at home watching. Uh, my prayers is that um, the kind of blessing that we will all receive be truly coming from the Lord and returning to the Lord for His glory and honor. Why don't you say good morning to your seatmates and show your smiling eyes, you know? <laughs> Uh, thank the Lord for the presence of everyone who's here. And um, uh, my, my role this, this day is not to preach, but to introduce to you a very special uh, guest, uh, also a very special friend, and of course a messenger of, uh, of the Lord, bringing his words to all of us this morning. Our speaker or God's mouthpiece for today is an officer of the Philippine Army. Uh, he is an infantry officer and he is stationed at uh, the camp at Carmen. Some of you who are from Carmen, uh, you may um, come and visit the camp. I don't know if you can go and visit him uh, during this time because he is such a busy officer. Uh, but you, when you see him there, I hope that you can greet him also. Uh, he graduated at the Philippine Military Academy in the year 2004. But he was born in San Roque, northern, northern Samar. And, uh, but he grew up in Lapuyan, Zamboanga del Sur. Uh, GCAF is uh, very acquainted with the people uh, from Lapuyan. And we all know that Lapuyan is a baluarte of the Alliance people. And um, if you... Uh, were able to get to know uh, Pastor Joel Ortiz. Uh, Pastor Joel is his lolo. Uh, but uh, because most of the people there in Lapuyan are, uh, I think they are from one family, you know, one tribe and uh, one family. Um, his wife is also here with him, but I think she's at the uh, extension room. Her name is uh, si Ma'am Jill Hazel. Uh, Lagod, she's there with uh, with her uh, baby Mia Juliana. She's one year old, and also there they have two more boys who is at their lolo right now. Their name is Matthew Joash and Jabez, Jabez Meir, fifteen and thirteen year old respectively. Um, he's very close to me and um, David because we were able to spend time with him as he also studied in the International Graduate School of Leadership in the year 2016, taking up uh, masters, uh, Master of Arts in Transformational Leadership. So I think we had a, a few subjects nga classmate me sa uh, ang speaker today. He is currently, of course, at the 4th Infantry Division in Patag, uh, CDO. Patag, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that's near Carmen, so Dol Dolra. Um, his previous work uh, was, uh, he was at uh, 2004 at uh, Cagayan Province, Tugegarao area, 2004 to 2009. 2009-2014, uh, he was assigned in Caraga region. And 2014-16, to 16, he was at IGSL. Uh, taking up his master's degree. And uh, 2016 to 2020, he was uh, assigned at the Philippine Military Academy. And from 2020 and up until now, August last year, up until now, he's assigned here sa Cagayan de Oro City. Um, let me introduce to you uh, humbly our speaker for this day. He is a uh, messenger from the Lord and a servant from the Lord. He, Sir Mark Serapion Lagood Jr. Sir Mark. Thank you, Jay. Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. 
Uh, I am greeting everyone, both here and uh, those who are joining us online today, all over the world. Uh, I remembered, I just came here to see my friends, uh, to reconnect to them, fellowship and see their good-looking faces. I'm talking about Jay and uh, Pastor David. But uh, never did they know that our living God had done something bigger. And honestly, I'm overwhelmed of the thought of just being here with you, the Golden City Alliance Church. When I attended the service here uh, last year, I think it was the third week of uh, November, I, I, I was really amazed to know that you were studying the Word of God word for word. And I was amazed that you were journeying through the whole book of Matthew. I just didn't realize that I would be joining you not just as a listener and learner, but also as an exhorter. So please join me to honor God. Let us uh, come to Him in prayer. Our great and mighty God, the creator of heavens and earth, the source of life, the source of hope, the source of wisdom and understanding, our great healer, our provider, our sanctifier, and our king to come, the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, we humbly bow down before you as your people, as a church. We acknowledge our sinfulness, our failures, our stubbornness, and our unfaithfulness. May you cause each and every one of us to humble ourselves to you and allow us to ask for forgiveness for our trespasses. I personally ask of you, O Lord, right now, for I am to a sinner. I need your forgiveness, Father God, and I am nothing without you. O Lord my God, as we come to you this day, we'd like to offer to you this church, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You have brought us all together here for one reason, and that is to be spiritually filled by you, and you alone. I therefore ask you, Father, to cause each and every one of us to focus on you alone, to clear our minds, to keep us away from any distractions. Do not allow any problems, not even any pain, our sickness, not even the evil one, to hinder our ghost in and receiving the blessings to you today. I pray also that you'd allow, allow us to be a different person upon hearing your words today. Because you alone, Father, could change us. You alone. And ask you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit to be with us this very moment to fill each and every one of us. And I pray, Father God, that you will bind the evil one and cause him to be still in Jesus' name so that he is not able to de distract us as we worship you today. And we thank you, Father, for you have allowed us to be here phys physically and even virtually. May you empower each one of us. As you empower me, Father God, to speak your word today, May you cause everything to work in accordance to your perfect will, Father. This is our prayer, and we ask this in the most powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So, how are you, my brothers and sisters? I hope you are doing well. And uh, by the way, how's your week after listening to the news about COVID and everything that happens. And yeah, COVID is still lurking around. I just want to ask you, uh, how did you feel when you finally have heard that the vaccine of uh, COVID has been finally approved? How was the feeling? Yeah, you have heard about Pfizer. It was approved in the US. Maybe you have also heard about this from China. 
Maybe you had mixed emotions. Emotions of excitement, anxiety, doubt, joy. Uh, I am sure that there is a great divide here. If you would ask those who were joyful to come here and those who were doubtful to go there, it would, you would be feeling places. But how about when you have heard about this news? A question on the efficacy. Is it really effective? How did you feel after hearing that there was already a vaccine, then suddenly you're, you're questioning about its, its effectiveness? How about this news? That someone already died, those who have received the vaccine. What was the feeling inside you? Were you still excited? Were you still excited for a government to receive that vaccine? I know we have willingly waited. We were really excited. But now seeing and hearing this news, I think could be doubting. If that vaccine arrives, I, I know there, there would be someone from here who would be going there, queuing up, staying in line. But uh, for sure, I will not be going there. If you want to take that shot, and I'll give it to you. Huh? I'll, kunin nyo na yung share ko. I'll, I'll be giving it to you. Huh? Really, with this kind of news, I would not. I would not dare to go there. But how about if, yeah, it, it, this happens, no? I have seen this in your, in the GCAF page. No? This happens because we are all concerned. We are really concerned of what's happening in our world. We want to find the answer. We want to find the cure of this. And ultimately, we want to be secured. We want to feel secure. But how about if, if we listen to the news and, and we hear that there's already a very effective COVID vaccine with no side effect, nothing at all. It's free. Okay? And it's being promoted by our leaders. Promoted and being certified by all scientists in the world, promoted by the kinds of Peter Tanchi, the Pope, our leaders of Kamakop, they're saying that, yeah, go, you go. It's okay. Even our president, the, the famous uh, couple, Queen Elizabeth, they, they from uh, the statement of our president that he would be taking it privately. Now he is saying, I will take it publicly. I will show it to you. There's no problem with this. How would you feel about that? Would that be something to make you happy? Yeah. Uh, for sure, I would be really happy with that. But here's the catch. Okay? It's only in the place where it was created. In, in Iceland. Uh, all the countries are afraid that there would be a chaos if they would bring it out from that place because uh, people would be fighting for this. Because this is a very precious uh, a commodity right now. Okay? It's there in Iceland, but you will have free transportation to go there. The government will be providing airplanes. They will be providing ships just to bring you there. And you could still uh, stay one week there. Huh? Without COVID, free, I'll go there. And no visa requirement. Just bring yourself. Who among you here would like to go there? Uh, be true to yourself. Okay? It's free. 
Okay, the government will be paying everything. Just bring yourself. Okay? And they, they will be allowing us to stay there even for five days. Just for nothing. Maybe, maybe to have sightseeing of the nice place. But here's another catch. As you line up there, you need to take a lie detector test. Lie detector test. And this is the question. If you answer it correctly, you'll be given a shot. But if not, you'll be sent home. The question is, do you really believe that this vaccine could cure you? Do you really believe that this vaccine could cure you? So, we are willing to go there, but the question is, can we really pass their screening? Can we pass the test? Yes, it's different to bring ourselves there, and it's different also for them to decide on our faith. Brothers and sisters, we have a similar situation. You have, we have been talking about what will happen when Jesus comes, when he comes. We are waiting for that. More than the feeling that we are waiting for the COVID vaccine, we are excited waiting on our Lord to come. And we will be falling in line. We will be falling in line. I will go there. Even if no one would tell me, as soon as I see that crowd lining up, I will be curious. I will go there. Oh, this is Jesus. This is him. I have waited for him. I'll go there. Just like sheep and others, the goats will be lining up. But you'll be facing the same question. You'll be facing the same question. Because it is not us who will decide if we'll be able to spend time with Jesus, but He alone will decide if we will spend time with Him. Let's go into the. Before we go there, I, I just want to, to talk about more how amazed I am with with what you are going through here. For those who have joined the church uh, for the first time today, we, we would, first we would like to acknowledge your presence and welcome you to this uh, very loving church, the community of Christ here in the Golden City Alliance Fellowship. And yes, you have heard it right. The church, I have said it earlier, the church is in a journey of studying the Gospel of Matthew starting, they started from chapter 5, chapter 5. And right now, we are in chapter 25. And it has been a very long journey, very long journey. But it's really a rewarding journey. So if you want to revisit what uh, they have talked about, you can go to their page, you can go to their YouTube, you can go to their Facebook account. Also try studying what is it like to study the Word of God verse by verse for the whole book. And though this church started in, verse, uh, in chapter 5, I believe they did not uh, miss to go to chapter 1. Okay? It's very important. When we read the story, we want to know the, whole, the wholeness of the story. Okay? And that is the right way to study the Word of God. Studying it in, in its context. You study it in a wider perspective, what comes before and what comes after it. Because uh, if, you, if you just focus on a, on a specific verse or a chapter, you would be in danger of misinterpreting it. Just like when we talk to our friends, we should understand where is he coming from? Where is she coming from? Why is she telling it to me? What am I experiencing right now? Why is this man giving me these advices? It's very important to study the Word of God in a proper context. And Jacob, honestly, this is the first time that I have seen this for the many churches that I have been to. So, praise God. And you just don't know how pressured I am. Huh? 
Because you have been through this for so, so long, then, and then here I came. And I'll be talking about the most important part. Huh? And I know this is not an accident. God allowed it to happen. Though I was pressured, I was still excited for the Lord. Okay. I, I was talking about, because uh, for the past few Sundays, we have been through the Olivet Discourse. The preaching of the Lord Jesus, Mount Olive. And we are at the last few verses in chapter 25. So let's look into the word of the Lord. Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be assembled before Him. He will separate people from one another like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invited you in? Or naked and close you? When did we see you sick? Or in prison and, vi and visit you? And the king will answer them, I tell you the truth. Just as you did it for for one of the least of these brothers or sisters, brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left. So, you are at the left? Oh, no, I am kidding. It's not you. Huh? Depart from me, you accursed, into eternal fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not receive me as a guest. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not give you whatever you needed? Then he will answer them, I tell you the truth, just as you did not do it to the one of least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will depart into eternal fire, but the righteous into eternal life. May God bless the reading of his word. Now let's look into the conclusion of the Olivet Discourse. This is where, the one that we have read, it is where the word of the Lord tells us that Jesus will be at the judgment seat. And he will reward his followers and will punish the pretenders. If you look into the start of the passage, start of the sentence, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and the angels with him, then he will sit his glorious throne. The word used here is when, when, not if. It is so because this is a very clear, it is very clear that this event will be happening in the future. Jesus is really sure of this. 
when he told his disciples. Even Matthew, when he wrote about this, he was also sure he did not use if, he used when. Our grammar lessons would tell us that when you use when, it would refer to the time in the future situation or condition that we are certain or sure to happen. But when you use if, it is used to introduce a possible or probable condition in the future. It may happen, it may not happen. So here, because this is already at the end of the, the preaching of Jesus, he was telling his disciples that after all these events, after the wars, the rumors of wars, the persecution of his disciples, the arrival of the Antichrist, and the great tribulation, he will come. Jesus Christ will come. And there is no question of his coming. He will cert certainly come. We could not stop. We could not stop the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We could not stop it. The second coming is beyond our control. That is what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples. That is what Matthew was trying to tell the Jews and the Gentiles. That is what the Lord is trying to tell us right now. He is coming. He is coming. And we have no control about that. So if you have no control about this, why would I worry about it? When are you coming, Lord? I should not worry about it because He will come. What we should be more worried about is what He will do when He comes. What He will do. What will He do when He comes? That should be our concern. And as the King to come, there is one thing he is bound to do. One thing he is bound to do. And that is to judge over all of us. The Old Testament and the New Testament, even our daily lives. Even our daily lives. It reveals to us that there will be a reckoning time. There will be a reckoning time. In the schools, any learning institutions, they have the final quiz. It would be qualitative or quantitative that they have a reckoning time. Even our bodies, as we grow older, it would go, it would ask us of the things that we did to our bodies when we were still young. And not just the events. If we go back to the Bible, one of my favorite books in, in the Old Testament is Ecclesiastes. I dreaded it before when I was young, but when I realized that it was a really nice work of a bright mind, a person whom I could, I could look into, I could model, learn from his mistakes, you could look into what King Solomon has realized. He realized this at the twilight of his years, when he was already old. After enjoying everything that he had acquired on earth, he realized that God would evaluate everything, everything including every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. And just as I have said earlier, When Jesus comes, no one could escape his judgment. No one could escape his judgment. You could not say, uh, when Jesus comes, you will be delayed. Maybe there's a traffic there. Maybe I would not be here already. Maybe I'm already dead, so I will not be judged. No. You will not escape it. 
the Bible tells us that He will judge the living and the dead. It's very clear in Revelation 20, 11, 15. That passage, go into your Bible, that talks about the second coming of Christ and the judgment. And verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. Then the books were opened, and another book was opened, the book of life. So the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. The dead and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each one was judged according to his deeds. It's very clear. Even in Hebrews, I forgot the verse. No? It says, For all of us are destined to die once. And after that, judgment. Even in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 5, it says, But they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So there's no escape for us. Even if we don't want to fall in line, even if we don't want to go, you will be forced to go there. Because that is just the, the thing that Jesus came here for. He will judge us. And when He comes, this is what He will do. He will reward His followers and He will punish the pretenders. It is very clear here in our passage in Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 46. It talks about goats and sheep. If we recall the stories of Jesus, he always refers to his followers as sheep and he as the good shepherd. And, well, just like when our teacher would ask us something, I would be pretending, even if I did not listen, I would be pretending that I had listened. And when the time comes, maybe some of us here, I will not pretend. I know that I am a sheep of God. Some of us here would still pretend to be a sheep, even if he is a goat. So, knowing this, knowing that Jesus would come, he will reward his followers, but he will punish the pretenders. What does this mean to you? What does this mean to you? Know that there will be only two verdicts. First is the reward of eternal life to the true believers. God, Jesus Christ, will reward the true believers. We could read this in verse 34 to verse 40 and in verse 14b. Okay. In verse 34 it says, then the king will say to those on his right, the sheep, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That is his statement for the first half of the group. Then for the second half of the group, the second verdict, it is the punishment in eternal fire. Okay. It is seen in uh, verse 41 to verse 46. Jesus said, He will be saying this, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I would, I would put this, I would call this the ultimate vaccine. Ultimate vaccine. The gift of God. Ultimate vaccine. His verdict, when we line up there, when Jesus arrives, He will give us the ultimate vaccine. And this vaccine could heal our sicknesses. Could heal our pain. Even 
in the book of uh, Revelations, it tells us that there will, in heaven, because this eternal life, in heaven there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more crying. That is the ultimate vaccine. But this one, this is the ultimate rejection. Ultimate rejection. I would not explain it further because to be rejected, it would be really hard. and It is the final judgment already. But now, ladies and gentlemen, knowing that Jesus would be coming to judge us and that he will be rewarding his true followers, but will be punishing the pretenders, the question once again is, what, what is it to us? What would be our response? I just hope that our response is to self-evaluate. To question. Question ourselves. Am I really a sheep of Jesus? I am, really his, am I really his follower? I am I really a true follower of Christ? I think this is the most important thing that the passage is telling us. More than just knowing that we will be judged, we should be able to tell ourselves confidently, yes, oh. sorry, yes, I am indeed, indeed a follower of Christ. And when I go there, fall in line, fall in line, I'm using fall in line because I'm a soldier, Sinabikong fall in line, fall in. You should be falling in right now. Dalawang linya lang. Okay? When you fall in line, we should be certain that we'll be receiving that gift of life. And if there is someone here right now, even those who are listening, watching us live, if you are still uncertain of what answer you will get from Jesus. There is a way. There is a way to be sure. And it is seen in the word of God. If you are unsure, you who are uncertain, while we are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ, we should ensure this following. Ensure that you have received the gift of life. We must be sure that we know His commands. And we must persevere in faith. This was all, all of these were the topics of the previous uh, verses. We was, uh, we, we ensure these things, we receive uh, the gift of life, this only means that we should submit to His kingship. Submit to his kingship, we show submission to his kingship, and we stay faithful to his kingship. And we can only do this, no? we are waiting, yeah? uh, as we were talking about the coming of Christ. We can only say that we are waiting for our king if we are his subjects. Just like when, when uh, a leader comes here. Maybe let's, let's talk about Sara Duterte. He's a famous uh, mayor. We are excited to see her when she comes here. You would be greeting her, mayor, mayor, mayor. But we are not her people. We, she is a mayor, but she is not our mayor. So when the king comes, Jesus Christ, it is very important that we are already his people. We are already his people. And the only way to do that is to receive the gift of life from the Lord. It's very important that, to know that God loves each one of us. We are all sinners, but God loves us. He loves us. And he said in his word, 
that he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. He's telling it to all of us right now. Telling it to you. And God is doing this to have a reconciliation to his people. He willingly offered his son, Lord Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins. Our response is very crucial. It's very, very crucial. Jesus Christ can only be our king if we are among his people. We, he can only be our king if we have already received the gift of life. The gift of life from God the Father, which is his own initiated action to show his love for all of us. And as we see it here, it tells us, if you go back to Romans 3.23, it tells us, all have sinned and fall short in the glory of God. When Jesus comes, what will we receive? Is it eternal death or eternal life? Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. When we say we will receive the gift of life, how will we receive it? We should believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And that when he died on the cross, he also did it for you. For your, for your sins. As a payment for your sins. Wages, payment for our sins. And that we should also believe that Jesus Christ rose again on the third day. He is now with the Father and He is the King to come. He is the King to come. And that is why we could go back to Matthew chapter 25 verse 31. We could say that we are, we are waiting for that King to come. If we have received the gift of God, He is our King to come. But if not, He is not your King. He is not your King. That's why it's very important that we make sure that He is our King. And this is very important, a very important passage in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Because when we go there and line up, to meet Jesus Christ. It is not our works. The passage, the word of God is very clear. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of your work, so that no one should boast. So that no one should boast. And here we go to the next response that you should be doing as we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should know His commands. We should know His commands. If He is indeed our King, we should know the commands of the King. Otherwise, you will be punished. Otherwise, you will be punished. And Jesus said, the person who has my commandments and obeys them, it is He who loves me. It is easy he loves me. And I will show him. I will show myself to him. If we know the commands of the Lord, it is only then that we are able to do what Jesus had said as the greatest commandment. Jesus was asked, What's the great command, greatest commandment? And he said, To love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's the greatest commandment. And next to it is to love your neighbor as yourself. That is very important. And in our text in Matthew 25, 
31 to 46. It talks about their food, water, shelter, clothing, and comfort. Well, we will not be judged because of that only. Okay? When God comes, He will not be judging us because of that. He will be judging us for all the things that we have done. He will be looking into our hearts. He will be looking into our hearts. He will check if what is really there. Just like King Josiah, he made a covenant with the Lord to obey his commands with all his heart, his mind, and with all his might. But he was not doing it before he found the book, before he rediscovered the book, because it was lost. It's very important. So therefore, it's very important that we should know the commands of the Lord. And it is even being commanded to us in Joshua 1, verse 8. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be able to do everything written on it. Then, in sample of the example of just King Josiah, it said of him that no king before or after repented before the Lord just as he did with all his heart, soul, and being in accordance to the whole law of Moses. If we go there and line up to meet Jesus Christ, that is also what Jesus Christ would check in us. Do we really love him with all our hearts? As yes, he said in, to Samuel while he was looking for the king, Samuel was looking at the height, the build, but the Lord told him, I look into his heart. So even if you pretend, when Jesus comes, we pretend, I am good, I am a sheep. We could not pretend. Because God will not look at what we wear. How many, uh, how big is our muscles? He will not look at that. He will look into our hearts. He will look into our hearts. The next response that we should do while we wait for the Lord, ensure that we Stay faithful to his kingship. And we are encouraged by the Lord. We are encouraged by the Lord not to give up meeting together as some as the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another all the more that we see the day approaching. Just like the sheep is saying, oh, I, I can do this alone. I can do this alone. But then... He did not know that there was a wolf waiting for him. We should be careful, brothers and sisters, that we should not neglect, neglect the command for us to assemble. And it's really hard right now. It's really hard. Because uh, we are in a situation where some places does not allow assemble, assembly. And it's important to know also that we are also told by the Lord to obey our leaders. When they say, you don't gather together, you should follow. So it's, it's really tricky. Even right now that we are already allowed to do this, we are, some of us are still cautious because uh, of this COVID situation. Maybe others are still not coming to church because they are still afraid. But we should be careful of our reasons. Are you, why are we not attending church? Why are we not even spending time or 
exerting effort to meet our brothers and sisters online. Why do you attend? Do you really not attend church just because of COVID? Is that the reason? You are not attending church, but maybe you are attending birthday parties. Maybe you are going to the malls. Uh, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the no, uh, video. Okay? You are go going to crowded places. We must be careful, brothers and sisters, that we don't neglect the command to assemble. We have to persevere through this. We have to become resourceful on how to assemble in this current situation. Even if it is boring, boring to be in BTC, boring to be watching the preaching of pastor at the, at the Facebook Live, at uh, YouTube, we should persevere. Okay? If we can assemble in a former small group members or fellowship group, we should also remember that Jesus is not just asking us to assemble. He's also asking us maybe, look at your house, in your household. Because, yeah, I, I forgot about this. So. We must remember, and we must be careful that we do not neglect because we should be in danger that we might reject what was taught to us. And we, if we reject it, there is no forgiveness to that. The word of the Lord is very clear. If we reject the teachings of the Lord, there is no forgiveness to that. And if you are having right, a hard time, as I was telling you, if you are, not, if you are having a right time in assembling with our uh, group mates before, our brothers and sisters, let's look at into our families. Let's look at into our office. Maybe this is the chance for us to act on what Jesus has also told us. He has told us He told us to do something for him. As we persevere, he told us to perform the great commission. To go and make disciples. Maybe it is in your office, in your small office where only from 10 of you going to office, you are just, there are just three of you because it's a shift. DTH maybe, MWF, or maybe in your house. It's a chance for us to tell them about the good news. And maybe we'll be able to create a new fellowship group. A new chance to spur each other. A new chance to, to encourage each other. We are not encouraged by our friends who is from the other side of the town, but maybe your office mates. Maybe they are your new, your new brothers and sisters in Christ. And they are just waiting, waiting for us to tell them about the good news of the Lord. And if we do these things, if we act on this as believers while waiting in the return of Jesus Christ our Lord, if we receive His gift of life, if we submit to His kingship, if we know His commands, and show submission to his kingship, loving him by all our hearts, our minds, and understanding. And if we persevere in our faith and stay fit, faithful to his kingship, we will be sure that Jesus will pick us up as sheep and will allow us to live with him with our eternal life in heaven. That is God is telling us right now. And it is for each one of us, for each one of you, to respond. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ.